Hello everyone! I am coming to you on this very humid day. Look at my hair, it's getting all poofy around the edges. Uh, because I would like to talk to you guys a little bit about my crystal magic. Uh, as I mentioned in my introductory video, uh, I am eclectic in my practice, but a great deal of what I do is with crystals. Uh, and I thought today I would just walk you guys a bit through my collection. This will probably be done in three parts if I had to guess, because, uh, well, let's just say my collection is a bit extensive. Uh, and I'm going to try to, you know, um, just to briefly summarize some of the properties each crystal has. Uh, all of them have many, many properties, and I could probably do an entire video just about each one, but this will be a... 50 cent tour, so to speak, uh, and I'm also planning to do it uh, in roughly chronological order of when I acquired them. Uh, for a lot of stones, I don't remember exactly when that was, so like I said, this will be very roughly <laughs> chronological. Uh, but first, I would like to start off showing you guys this. This here is a very large piece of amethyst crystal uh, in matrix. As you can see, that uh, means that it's still connected to its original um, bedrock, I guess. Uh, amethyst is uh, a purple stone, as you can see here. The purple color comes from iron ions in the uh, silicon dioxide, and actually you don't want to uh, set your amethyst out in, in direct sunlight because the sunlight will uh, oxidize the iron ions and the color in your crystal will fade. So, anyone out there with amethyst, maybe don't put it on your windowsill. Uh, and also don't charge it in sunlight. I would use moonlight for that or um, salt water, or, you know, any other method other than sunlight. Amethyst is kind of a classic stone where uh, crystal healing and um, crystal magic is concerned. If I had to give like a must-have crystal for uh, any uh, interested witch, pagan, etc., I would definitely recommend they have amethyst. Um, it's an incredibly soothing stone, like it's practically sedative in its properties. Uh, it has just a very, very calming energy. It's also uh, very good for uh, overcoming alcoholism if uh, you or someone that you're healing is struggling with that. This crystal can be an aid in that journey. Uh, I have had this crystal for a very long time. This is probably the first crystal that I ever got. Uh, when I was a very little girl, I was helping my grandmother clean out her garage, and we found this in a box, and she gave it to me. I have always loved it. I have had it for years and years, uh, and so I almost always had this on display. Uh, I also have... Uh, a piece of rose quartz, which the color isn't quite as strong on my camera, but as you can sort of see, it's a very nice light pink color. Uh, rose quartz is very important uh, in crystal magic for developing love, particularly self-love, uh, and can also be used, you know, for friendship and to foster good feelings. Uh, I was given a very small piece of rose quartz by a friend um, when I was in first or second grade. Uh, I have since given that piece of rose quartz to my girlfriend, but uh, I have this uh, larger piece that I got, I think, at the zoo. They had some um, crystals in one of the gift shops. Now, I'm sure we have all seen at... Um, Sometimes restaurants will have them, or, um, you know, gift shops or whatever will have, like, a big box of crystals that you can, like, pick through and, like, fill a bag, and if you, you know, you can take as many as you can fit in the bag for, like, six or seven dollars, I don't know. So I have, um, 
this little baggie of um, crystals that I got from the Rainforest Cafe years and years and years ago. Almost all of these are dyed agate, like uh, this purple one um, and this pink one here. Those are all just dyed agate. There's several of those. Um, there are also a couple of carnelian that I have. Uh, and this one, this yellowish, yellowish crystal is citrine. Um, and then I also do have this uh, rutilated quartz. Um, so those all, those all came from the Rainforest Cafe. I've had them for a long time. I use them occasionally. Um, in that same batch, although I keep them in a separate bag, I also have several Tiger's Eye. Uh, now, Tiger's Eye is good for a lot of things. Um, I use it a lot as um, like a truth stone and for mental clarity and everything. Oh, I also have this one. Um, but they can also be used for uh, wealth, for courage, um, for physical strength, that sort of thing. Uh, and then I have uh, this piece of turquoise which um, turquoise is a stone of protection. It is a stone um, for travel. Uh, if you're going to be traveling and would like um, to help ensure that you have a safe trip, turquoise is a good stone for you. It is also a, a crystal that is associated with Athena, so if you work with her, this might be a, a good offering to put on her altar. Um, then, several years ago, I started attending a local sort of Ren Fair pagan festival thing um, that is the same weekend as Luna Sob. I've mentioned that in a couple of my videos now. And they always have several vendors there who sell absolutely gorgeous crystals. Uh, so the first one that I picked up there was this guy. This is a piece of emerald calcite. And if you've never felt calcite, it has a very soapy, almost kind of greasy texture to it. And calcite comes in all different colors. This one you can see is an emerald green, but they pretty much come in the entire rainbow spectrum, practically. Uh, the green variety is good for um, things like memory. Uh, it's also a stone of the heart chakra, if you work with chakras. Um, they produce a very uh, loving energy, um, soothing. Um, you can also use it to like help let go of the past, uh, so on and so forth. And they're also good for encouraging out-of-body experiences or helping with astral travel, if that's something you're looking at. Fluorite. Uh, this is fluorite. If I turn it on its side, you can see it's got some lovely stripes in it. I believe this one is a piece of Chinese fluorite. I'm not positive in that. Um, but fluorite is my personal study stone. These are great for enhancing memory. So if you're a student of any kind, or if you're learning a new skill, keeping some fluorite and maybe a sprig of rosemary with it together are uh, a very powerful study talisman. Um, red jasper. You can see this guy here. That's red jasper, and red jasper is good for strength, for vitality. Anytime you need a good energy boost, uh, red jasper can help, but obviously you should still make sure that you're getting the right amount of sleep and everything because, you know, even crystals can only take you so far. So be gentle with yourself, guys. Uh, this is a bloodstone, and it looks really almost black on camera, but it's just a dark green. And then my camera's not going to show it, but it has little teeny tiny red flecks under the surface. And um, bloodstone uh, is sometimes called like heliotrope or plasma or something when the speckles are yellow as opposed to red. But anyway, uh, this is a healing stone. If you have a cut of some kind, like I just sliced my hand open this morning accidentally on an X-Acto knife. Yay me! Um, but you can use uh, bloodstones to help stop the bleeding of a small cut or to encourage larger injuries to heal faster. It's almost like the crystal version of yarrow. The, you know, the herb yarrow is also, uh, stops bleeding and everything. So, uh, yeah, that's bloodstone. 
Um, and then this here is malachite. Malachite has a very high copper content, and as I'm sure you all know, copper is a great conductor of electricity, so if you need to amplify some power in your spells, malachite is a good one to use. Um, it's also a stone for uh, a pregnant individuals, so if you are going through a pregnancy, uh, carrying malachite with you can help to ensure, you know, a, a smoother pregnancy, smoother childbirth, etc. Um, these two stones, if I can pick it up, uh, these are very closely related. This one is sodalite, and this one is lapis lazuli. The primary difference between the two is that lapis has flecks of pyrite in it. Um, both of them are creativity stones. Sodalite, in particular, is good for artists. And lapis lazuli is also known as, um, like a psychic stone. If you want to develop, uh, your third eye, if you want to improve, you know, clairvoyance of any kind, lapis lazuli can help you to do that. Um, this is also considered, like, a goddess stone. It's very associated with spirituality. Uh, and with, uh, particularly some goddesses from, um, like the Mesopotamian region, so if you work with Astarte, for example, uh, Lapis Lazuli has connections to that area. Uh, this here is a piece of Unakite. Uh, it's, again, hard to see, but it's got flecks of pink mixed with green. And, um, that's actually two minerals in one stone, and, um, that basically gives it a very balancing property um, between, you know, any kind of energies that are like the polar opposites at the end of a spectrum, you know, whether that is uh, gender or, uh, you know, light and dark, hot and cold, etc. Uh, Unakite helps to balance those energies. Um, and then this is just your standard quartz crystal point. This one, I think I also got at the zoo. A lot of these I have, um, I just picked up at gift shops at zoos and museums and stuff. Um, this is one of the, uh, bigger, uh, clear quartz points that I own. And, um, clear quartz is kind of an all-purpose crystal. Like, if there's kind of another must-have, um, it's probably clear quartz, because these you can, uh, program with your intent for just about any purpose you can think of. Um, and also, when they're in a pointed form like that, and this goes for any crystal, whether that's a natural point or whether it's been, uh, artificially sculpted, that makes them, a, a great, almost like a wand, you know, they, they conduct and they direct energy. Um... This here, let me get it so you can kind of see the pattern, uh, this is an Andalusite fairy cross stone. Uh, as you can see, there's like a, a cross shape in it, uh, and that's just how the stone develops, like that is entirely natural. Uh, and they are named for where they are found uh, in Andalusia, Spain, I believe is how you pronounce that. Um, and they were considered to be symbols of, of the fairy folk, uh, so if you work with fairies, um, there's actually two different kinds of fairy stone, of uh, fairy crosses. There's these, and then there's ones that, um, like, are actually cross-shaped. So both of those are called fairy crosses, it can be a little bit confusing, but both of them are, are symbols of the fairies. Um, and... I think that's about all of the ones I'm going to get into in this video. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the crystals I've shown you, uh, please do leave a comment. I will be talking about them all more later, I'm sure. And I will be moving right along to part two. So see you then.